So this program, ladies and gentlemen, is called the WN, WEN Think Startup. Okay. Uh, why Think Startup? Uh, I mean, what is there to think? You know, you either start up or, uh, uh, you know, you don't. The fact of the matter is that we believe that it's only when you get thinking, you know, get aligned, get start aligning yourself in that in that direction, okay, is that you start taking the first step, and that's exactly what we what this course is all about. <clears throat> it will be um, it will be a start for you in this exciting world of entrepreneurship. It's very important that we you know. Uh, look at the entire program from that perspective. It will help you uh, explore the exciting world of startups, okay? what startups are all about, uh, what are those things which are required to get started. But at the same time, we will also focus on, as I said, our primary objective is to help you become the best version of yourself. And therefore, the first thing that we are not only going to look at from a you know startup perspective as to how to get started, but also to see that how you're going to be successful, whether in the world of startups or whether in a corporate environment. How do you get? Because these skills, by the way, have been recognized as key life skills that you require today to be successful, irrespective of whether you're getting into a job, all right, or you are, you know, becoming an entrepreneur. So remember, so all of you getting into family businesses, getting, starting up something on your own, doing a side hustle, getting into a, you know, a great, good corporate job, wherever, for whatever reason, these skills will in, ensure the best chance of success for you. And that's what we're going to focus on. All right. So uh, are we all on this together? Can we have a yes, no, do not agree? Anything on the chat box? Yeah, several people are typing. Great. Fantastic. Very good. OK, so good. Some people have started writing. Yeah, so the thing is, and thanks a lot, guys uh, and girls. OK, so what we're going to do is uh, I'm going to show you a picture, OK? I'm going to show you a picture and I'm going to do a um, poll along with it. Okay. And that poll is important, but I want you to get ready because I want to show you that picture and I want you to immediately respond. Okay. With the first thought which comes to your mind, a thought could be a word or a phrase. Okay. Anyone who can tell me what's the difference between a word and a phrase? Because I'm going to use this, this, this term very often. Anyone, what's the difference between a word and a phrase? Several people are typing. Fantastic. Press enter. Then only I'll come to see what are your responses. Word and a phrase. Group of words is phrase. Very good, Mr. Aditya Pandit, Archie Narang, Saib. Webhub, very good, very good. So all right, you, you got you got the drift. So when I say phrase, it has to be two, three words at the most. Don't give me a Ramayan, okay? So word or a phrase is what I want. I want one word, two words, three words, not more than that. So whatever I'm going to show you right now, I'm going to you know expect a word or a phrase which comes to your mind. So um, uh, Vicky, are we doing a chat on this or are we doing a mentimeter uh, poll we're on doing this? a mentimeter on this and i'm okay. also posting a link uh, all right so guys so, there's a link which you will see on the chat box okay this is the link now this is the first time it is happening so let me tell you when you see a link like this you click the link when you click the link <clears throat> a question opens up on your screen all right and that question may ask you to choose some words given your input word or a phrase all right make some choices or whatsoever now, this is very quickly to help you get going, all right, and collect information from other people, okay? So that's what we're going to do. So let me show you the picture, okay? The picture is this. 
Now, this is a regular site in India. Click menti.com, that link which is there, <clears throat> and tell me what is the opportunity that you see. All right. Uh, I'm sorry about that. We're not doing menti for this one. So maybe You're we can do it in one? a not a problem. Yeah, yeah. Put it on the chat box. Put what chat is box. the opportunity that you see? Start typing very quickly. First set of you know thoughts in your mind. What is the opportunity that you see? All right. All right. Parking, shelter, cleaning. Very good. Fantastic. Get going. Farming, garbage collections, recycling, cow food, cleanliness, milk extraction, car parking, sanitation, garbage management, cow bath. Okay, all right. Car repair, yeah, you, cars are there, yeah, garbage collection. And we'll just give it another 10 seconds. Ground to be used, which left behind, yeah, slaughter, slaughterhouse. Okay, all right. Okay. All right, so a lot of people are still responding. But you know what have I done right now or what we have done right now? We have thought like an entrepreneur. And let me let me uh, tell you a funny incident. So so like when you know Vicky was saying that you know I have had many entrepreneurial journeys in my life and my while I'm on something right now which is connected to the picture that you see and I'm going to talk about it sometime later but, the last venture, um, we had a bad, we had a, we had a very bad, uh, we had an amazing learning, but a bad experience in the sense, you know, we lost a lot of money and all of that stuff. But you know, we noticed something. When I say we, I, I mean me and my spouse. Okay. Uh, since then, and that was 2016, 2017. Okay. Since then, whenever we are in a car, in our car, and whenever we, you know travel wherever we see we have the same experience spot the opportunity and just like the way that you guys are saying all right if when you know when we see a picture like this hundreds of thoughts start coming into our mind that you know it could be food from waste it could be cow shelter it could be you know a better use of the of the ground which has been occupied all right garbage facility all right to be done car repairs better role this that everything and you know why because entrepreneurship and and it's not because i was an entrepreneur it's because i have had an entrepreneurial mindset all through my life and i've done that with my son who's you know almost uh your age and uh, from a very young age you know i got him to start with his first uh, I tried to get him to start with his first venture from the perspective of building an entrepreneurial mindset when he was barely about 10 or 11. Okay. Uh, but the fact of the matter is today, when we go out, all right, the moment we see an opportunity, whether we work on it or not, we, we, we be immediately become curious. Now, if you look at your responses, okay, a lot of them are logical. Yeah. Yeah. But a lot of them, also demonstrate some kind of empathy for what is happening around the cows, the you know condition of the of the uh, ground or the cars. So there is a logic element. There's a left brain, right brain thing which is happening together, and that is something which will happen in you. It will, it will, it will be so profound that everywhere you go, everything that you see, all right, you will see an opportunity. You will see opportunity in people's unhappiness, unfortunately. But you will see an opportunity to make them happy, to make the situation better, or do something or the other. That, my dear friends, is, is the mindset which you build. Not because you know that you have to go through what I went through in terms of you know losing money and stuff, but the moment you start looking like that, okay, when you go out on the field. When you go out on the road, everything that you see, you will unconsciously start spotting the opportunity. Okay. Let me show you another picture. This picture is not as radical as this picture, the one which is there on the screen. But tell me, what is the opportunity that you spot?
Go ahead. Put it on the ad box. Okay. Warehouse management, automatic inventory extractor, delivery services using box, delivery services using drones. Okay. Find the necessary item, barcode scanner. Computer has way to find product. Inventory manager. See more. There is there is some there, there are other things also on the in the in the picture. There are other things in the picture as well. Several people are typing, okay? All right. What else? More labor. <laughs> okay. Women empowerment. Very good. Okay. All right. Good. Okay. All right. Let's give it a break. Now, and, th and that, that's very important, okay? Keep this in mind. When you saw the earlier picture, you had no biases. Okay. And therefore, your mind just went berserk with all kinds of things that you saw in the picture. In the picture. But with this case, you're somewhat being able to relate to Amazon, Flipkart, a girl of similar age. Okay. Um, some of us might have worked in warehouses and stuff like that. Okay. Uh, we may be able to relate to the labor that she's putting in, all right, technology being used for inventory management and stuff like that. You know, things which are, but as an entrepreneur or a person with an entrepreneurial mindset, you will always not come across this kind of a picture. What you will come across is a picture like this, the reality of life. Why I wanted to do this difference, because I wanted to highlight the fact that as an entrepreneur we need to be able to see through everything spot the opportunity everywhere okay are you getting the idea that it is not and i want you to think like this for everything that you do so for example okay i'm sure some of you you know and most of you would have would have dinner after the session Okay, some of you may go out for a walk after the after after dinner. Okay, go. If you don't go every day, go tonight. You know why? You go out tonight for a twenty-minute walk and spot the opportunity. You will be amazed at the volume of information that you will grab by virtue of the observation that you will do over a 20 minute walk over two kilometers. That's it. So do that because I want you to build this as a part of your blood, which is to find the opportunity wherever, you know, it's possible. So remember, okay, that all of us have some dreams, you know, and while we are talking about opportunities here, but a whole lot of you may already have some ideas in your mind. We have some dreams in your mind, you know, something which you are pursuing, something that you want to achieve. Okay. So, so it's very important, my dear friends, that you keep those dreams alive. It's very, very important. And those dreams are not etched in stone. Dreams can change. They can evolve. Okay. A lot of things can happen. Sometimes dreams take time to get built. Okay. I'll give an example. Uh, you remember in 2008, you, you you might not have been grown up enough, all right? But we all know that in 2008, we had the Lehman crisis, okay, right? And I'm not going to ask if all of you know or not. I'm sure you're aware of it. The Lehman crisis happened in 2008, all right? It was a bad time, okay? And why did that happen? You can go ahead and watch a variety of movies which can tell you about that. But the Lehman crisis happened. And at that point of time, I used to be the head of learning for a... Uh, non-banking financial corporation, you know, and the and and they 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 would have business interest in um, uh, general insurance, life insurance, capital markets, wealth management, okay, and and variety of you know products, gold and you know stocks and this that. So 
my group CEO told me that, hey, Paco, can you do something? You know, because these guys are the intermediaries who sell the products. They were feeling low and down, and a lot of them had suicidal tendencies. You know, you can go back and check out on Google, and they will tell you that, you know, prior to 2008, every distributor or every intermediary used to talk as if they are the portfolio managers. Okay. I'm sure you're aware what portfolio managers are, those who manage wealth for you. All right. But when the Lehman crisis happened, that the reality started striking them that they are not portfolio managers. All right. They are intermediaries who are supposed to work on behalf of the uh, investor. Whereas all these guys have been doing all kinds of, you know, funny things all this time. So they obviously lost face. So at that point of time, my CEO told me that, you know, group CEO told me that, can you go ahead and, you know, run a program for them so that they can all get rejuvenated, you know? How do you rejuvenate some five, 10,000 people? Okay. And it has to be personal. So I actually started running a program, which obviously later on my team also conducted. And, you know, I personally covered about three, three and a half thousand people. And that program, essentially, that training program, essentially used to drive people to think towards their own personal mission and vision statements. Okay. Mission and vision statement. Now I was conducting this program and people were, you know, they would break down, they would cry, they would come into tears, they would get their families and, you know, very heavy, very, you know, um, heart wrenching program we used to conduct. And I used to, I, I did that. Now I was in Calcutta once. All right. And, uh, there was, a there was a gentleman who asked me a very, um, <laughs> very simple question. He says, Paco, what's your vision and what's your mission of life? Wow. I didn't know what to answer. I was conducting this program and this, this fleeting thought is to come to my mind sometimes as to what is my vision. But when someone else asks you, my God, and then it was 2009, 10, you know, I started writing what are the, you know, vision statements and all of that. And from there, I started getting onto a journey, which took about five, six years, but I got the dream. And why is it important? Because, you know, you may have dreams, but what will help you, what will help increase the chances of success is when, you know, you add three more things to it. Number one, perseverance. That is never giving up. And then you've got empathy. And then you've got curiosity. Now, perseverance is not about is, is about not giving up. Okay. And and you know, who are the best people? Who who, who are in the best age bracket to become an entrepreneur or to take the risks? One is you, and one is me. And you know why? Because for me, I have gone ahead and done a lot of things in life. I am now comparatively in a position where I can take those chances and you have the entire world open in front of you where you can go ahead and make those changes in your lives so that you can, you know, get that dream job or start up your journey, the start up your entrepreneurial journey. Okay. So have your dream and have perseverance. Perseverance again, to repeat is not to let, you know, let it go. Struggle hard and you will make it. Important components are empathy and curiosity. Okay. And why empathy and curiosity are important? Because curiosity is what will help you question everything. Look at everything logically. Ask questions. Why is the pro th there a problem? How could the problem be resolved? What are the options which are there? Can we do some brainstorming? Okay. That's curiosity. Being curious. Right? We are, as human beings, we are curious people. But we are also very empathetic, which is to say, okay, that how, how can we solve this problem for this individual? How can we solve this problem for this group of individuals? That's empathy. To, to feel connected with the people that you wish to serve or service or provide your service to, provide your products to, going into their lives to understand what exactly do they need and how will you be able to fulfill that. So your dreams, what you want to do, what you believe you're good at, perseverance, not giving up, 
combined with this empathy of trying of being with your customer you know trying to figure out what does the customer need trying to figure out you know how will the customer be satisfied and curiosity what is the problem that they're facing what are the dynamics of the problem how the problem could be resolved all right when you combine all of them that increases your chances of success okay it's a small concept but i want you to keep this in your mind always whether you're looking for a job whether you're looking for you know the next pay hike whether you're joining your family business whether you're going to start up on your own and you being the first generation guy person in, in you know being an entrepreneur everywhere every walk of life even with your personal you know life on your personal side your dreams for your family not letting them be perseverance being empathetic you know trying to understand who they are in your family and trying to understand their needs and being curious in terms of how do you go ahead and resolve the problems with your family so whether professional or personal this quadratic equation it's not quadratic but by the way but still just to make it sound interesting this quadratic equation will always help you increase your chances of success and after dinner go out for a walk spot the opportunity in the 20 minute walk that you going to do all right keep these in mind and you will find success and we're going to use these two words empathy and curiosity a lot during our entire session okay so just keep that in mind now before we so the next thing that we do is something which is interesting get your get yourself ready we're going to do a mentimeter activity okay and i want you to answer one very simple question and you can give multiple answers okay the question is what questions about entrepreneurship or your idea are you looking at getting answered while you are here all right can you do that what questions about entrepreneurship so when you come into this program on entrepreneurship all right or to build entrepreneurial mindset all right what are those questions that you want to get answered go to mentimeter and put in your questions out there and we will see how we will handle all of them during the next you know nine sessions and if there's something which we will not be able to cover we will let you know but i want you to write that okay all right um so sir uh, your video is coming in front of qr uh, in front of the okay. qr code can you move okay. the qr code a little bit to the right maybe how do i move the qr code it's a fixed one no it's a fixed one it's all right uh, it's okay i've put the mentimeter link in the chat if there is anyone yeah, who has a problem let me yeah the mentimeter link is on the on the uh, screen itself chat. just one second no it's not even if i stop my video it does not work so it's on the chat box click that link go to mentimeter put in that response and so uh, we have dozens of uh, replies already may i share my screen yeah yeah please go ahead please go ahead. Uh, so you'll have to unshare your screen too for me to share it sure. all right is it visible oh wonderful fantastic what questions about entrepreneurship or your idea are you looking at getting answered while you're here all right how to think and work like if you have an idea product and service value creation design thinking taking the first step okay all right let it stabilize a little bit why don't you guys just give your responses and then you know i'm going to do something about this if you're getting any problem you know using mentimeter maybe you can uh, tell us your opinions or answer in the chat right no but I'll is, is the mentimeter not working for someone no the mentimeter is working for a lot of people as we can see but yeah, yeah. Just, so it's okay just just let's get it on the chat we'll uh, you know we'll cover it up out here all right all right so 21 people have responded 40 people alibaba and his 40 these where are you guys 
why are you not responding or your or are your points covered already even if it's covered put in there because the more uh, the more of similar responses and that will become larger so we will know that there is a stack ranking a stack ranking happens automatically so all the students of statistics you would know how it will help okay we'll wait for another about 15 20 seconds and we have enough of data to begin with All right, guys, come on. We still need 40 more people to. All right, that's OK. We'll get started. So one of the biggest things which are coming up is how to start. Fantastic. All right, so the moment we hit 30, we will go ahead and you know resume back the session. Is that OK, Vinayak? Absolutely. All right. If we add Ashish's response, then it becomes 30, by the way. <laughs> All right. Okay, let's start with it. Okay, the reason why we wanted to do this small little exercise with you, okay, is uh, to actually go ahead and tell you, as I mentioned earlier, that what are what out of all of these are we going to cover? Okay, so uh, Virag, is it possible to increase the uh, screen size for uh, Mentimeter? Um, it is not possible as of yet, but I'm All trying right, to. not a problem because more and more people are responding, and what's happening is the font size are becoming smaller. So while I've got Superman eyes, I don't think so. Everyone has. Okay. What so I'll do is, is it if it's okay with people? Maybe I can uh, pause the, pause the vote, voting for a while. Okay. Yeah, you could go ahead and pause it. I think we have got enough of responses. And these are, as I see the responses, you know, it basically is reflective of, you know, most of the responses that people would have coming in. Okay, voting is closed. So, so while this remains there, okay, uh, and, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, basically, uh, you know, start taking it up from one, one by one. Okay, so for example, you're saying, I have no idea for now how to start doing things. All right, don't worry. We are going to take you through, you know, how do you recognize ideas? So you're going to start spotting the opportunity from today itself, right? Okay, So, but how are we going to uh, look at the idea or look at the opportunity and how do we validate it? Okay, that's something that we're going to look at uh, uh, session number two, which is tomorrow, which is find and validate your startup idea, okay? Similarly, you know, uh, stakeholder versus beneficiary okay so basically we are talking about wh who are your customers all right and who are your um, you know uh, people who've gone ahead and funded in you so we will look at uh, we will look at the the entire thing about you know uh, how do we build a service or a product which goes ahead and helps the uh, customers okay and we will look at it from a customer's perspective what we refer to as the value proposition canvas and we will look at that so we're going to look at that there uh, you're talking about social innovation. Okay, yes. Uh, incidentally, we are going to look at the big disruptors, you know, in the in the uh, ecosystem, which uh, have been happening for quite some time, and how have they inspired a lot of innovation and disruption, which happens. Okay, we're going to touch upon that, including uh, social innovation. Okay, we're going to look at that. Ideation is going to get covered tomorrow in section two itself. Uh, problem identification. Okay, uh, so we are going to talk about more in terms of validation of your ideas, opportunities, and problems, and all that. That's going to happen tomorrow. Okay, uh, the question is how to start or how do I start? Am I to understand uh, when I when we say how I, how to start or how do I start? Is is it all about you know how do I get how do we get all the pieces together so that we can have the product ready and go to market? Is that what we're referring to? But my understanding I, is that uh, I guess that's I what we're like looking at. 
Yeah, good. I feel like it's from the idea. Like, let's say one person gets an idea. Yeah, Maybe exactly. 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 So I just wanted to, you know, have that uh, confirmation, you know. And and Vinayak is a extremely bright guy, you know. So we're going to look at. So we're going to look at idea. How ideas are going to get validated. We're going to look at, you know, how do we build a product or service, okay? Which we are going to look at the fourth session. Then we're going to look at how do we build the business model canvas. Okay, that's one single pager which goes ahead and captures everything about your business. Okay, that we're going to look at in the fifth session. Um, we're also going to look at, you know, when you talk about how to start, you're also going to talk about, you know, how do we build a team, you know? Uh, so how do you build your A team? You know, we talked about empathy about your customers and consumers, but we also talk about, you know, empathy also comes into play when we talk about, you know, um, uh, how do you build your, that crack team? And we're going to look at, uh, building, you know, your crack team in the sixth session. Okay. Similarly, uh, uh, you have got questions about what about a high value idea? We could look at uh, high value idea tomorrow. In fact, you should actually go in and remind me in terms of what is the high value idea that you're talking about. And, uh, you know, we're going to look at, see, entrepreneurship is about following certain, you know, well-established steps. It will, and why steps? Can you not do it otherwise? You can do it otherwise. Jamshedji Tata did it. Why can't you do it? But what happens is over the period of time, when we've gone through these various steps for so many times, it is a template or a framework which is available for you. Yeah. So that, you know, your chances of success are increased. But otherwise, can you do it completely on your own, your own, own way? Absolutely. I mean, I started as an entrepreneur at 15. Okay. And I've had some seven, eight ventures till now. Okay. But did I did I did I follow uh, all of this? I did not have the good luck and good fortune, all right, to have all of this available to me. You have make good use of it, all right. How can I? Then there, there's questions like uh, problem mapping. We're going to look at that tomorrow. What is entrepreneurship? Is entrepreneurship uh, for me? Yeah. So entrepreneurship. This is, a, this is a good point. Okay. Entrepreneurship, and as I covered earlier, what we're going to look at is yes the ways and means to start up as an entrepreneur but what is more important is look at entrepreneurial mindset because without that mindset you will not be able to start up and that same mindset will help you ladies and gentlemen in getting a job or growing in your job you know i was running the session sometime you know about i think about four or five years back, I was running a similar session, okay, and um, uh, someone said, you know, my dad runs a business, you know, about ball bearings. I have to go and join his business. What entrepreneurial mindset do I need? I need the mindset of my father <laughs> to, to go ahead and make, you know, Hey, you know, when the sun is out and when ball bearings are being made. So I gave them a story. And that story is of a company called Wake Fit. So you can you can search the net. It's W-A-K-E, Wake Fit, F-I-T dot C-O, Wake Fit dot C-O. Now, when I moved to Bangalore for the first time, you know, I was looking for mattresses. So I came across this mattress company called Wake Fit. And till then, you know, we were used to Carlon and Dullap and all of those things. Wake Fit is a new, newish kind of name. And I said, okay, that sounds interesting. So I actually got in touch with the uh, with the person who manages Wake Fit. Okay. And I'm using the word manages because he's not the first generation entrepreneur. He has joined his father uh, after having studied engineering. And it isn't relevant where he studied from. But he studied from a very good college. That's a different issue. But he came and joined. And he turned around that business. That business, which was just manufacturing some local uh, mattresses, which you would have bought when you can't afford a Kerlon or an orthopedic mattress. You know, you buy the cheaper one. I have done it. Okay. Uh, he was, they were that family, one of those guys, you know, and he turned around the entire thing, rebranded the entire thing. And today, Wake Fit is the choice for a whole lot of people. So it's a Bangalore based organization. They, they supply their mattresses all across the country in India. Okay. Fortunately, 
unfortunately it, it does not go to dubai i think as yet and, and i think we have someone from dubai here so but otherwise wakefit.co and they started doing pillows and then they started doing various mattress sizes and all that when i spoke to him he said i am not a first generation entrepreneur but see how it helps entrepreneurship and he was a part of the e-cell of that organized of that institution that he was with he said that you know look at that that ecosystem of that e-cell and all of that which is there with you as well you know in your in your uh institutions that guy took that took all the learning from there and came and made a pitch to his father and his uncles telling them that this is the new face of our organization that we that i want to build and he built it he's doing an amazing good job so similarly you know when it when, and and we'll see that you know how how people have gone ahead and impacted entrepreneur they've used entrepreneurial mindset to impact their job we're going to look at that but as we look at it then you've got product market fit okay so we're going to look at product market fit um i i think we're going to look at product market fit uh in in the late in a later session i think in the in the seventh or eighth session that we're going to look at okay we're going to look at gtm strategy there so as i as you would see okay and let me let me go back to let me go back to you know uh the um let me go back to the deck uh when i so that you know, all right can... I'll, I'll stop sharing my screen and yeah uh, also just a time check it's uh, 7 45. okay all right so um let me share my screen once again Uh, can you confirm, uh, Vinay? What do you see on my screen? Uh, yes, we see the the WN thing startup. Which... Uh, okay, all right. Okay, you continue to see that. Okay, so if you see, ladies and gentlemen, all right, um, we will take you through this entire you know journey. So, like today's session one, which is exploring the exciting world of startups, but tomorrow we're going to look at finding and validating startup ideas. Very quickly, we're going to look at that. Session three is all about disruptions, technology, social innovation and disruption we talked about and what are policy based disruptions which have happened in the market. Then we're going to look at how do we build a product or a service that customers love. So it's about how do we use empathy all right, to go ahead and try to figure out what does the customer want? What is the value proposition you know, that we go to build? So how to build a value proposition? We're going to look at session four. Then once the value proposition is ready, all right, how do we ensure that there is a viable biz business model around it? Okay, I mean, just a just a great product will not, you know, uh, make it viable in the market. We have to make it viable in the market. And how do we do that? And what are the tools? And we're going to use a variety of these tools there. Okay, so what are the business model? How to build that business model is what we're going to look at. We're going to look at how to build a team, you know, that crack team. And what are the things that we need to keep in mind when we build that crack team? Then we're going to look at very important. You know, we've got a product, we've got a business model, we've got the right set of people, but are we financially viable? So, what are startup costs? What are fixed costs? What are variable costs? What kind of focus that we need to have? All right. And this entire session about the financial viability, all right, is going to look at businesses, startups, not from the perspective of how your chartered accountant will look at. This is about looking at your business ventures in terms of how does your pocket look at it? All right. If you're going to bootstrap, you're going to use your own money, then what is the runway that you have? Because, because in our world as entrepreneurs, when we say a runway, after the runway, there is a deep dive. So we need to find out what is the runway that we have because we need to fly off. All right. Then after all of that, how do we take the startup to a real market selling environment? To real customers and once all of this is done then how do we secure funding for our startup now all of this okay all of these sessions will come to you now if while you do these sessions there'll be a small little journal okay with very simple questions which are there with the perspective which have been there which have been put there put up there with the perspective that it will help you 
solidify your learning, cement your learning so that you can immediately start, you know, putting it into practice. Because at the end of the day, all of it is gyan if you don't start putting it into practice. And I want you to put it into practice, not because you are here in an entrepreneurship program, but it should also help you to figure out what is the value proposition that you will provide to the corporate that you want to join. Because remember, my friend, there you are the product which people have to buy. You getting it? So you are the product which, is, which people have to buy. So what is the value proposition that you provide? What are the skill sets that you have, which fits into the requirement of the cost of the organization that, I, that, that you want to, you wish to work with? Are you viable? All right. Will you be a part? Will you make or break the A team there? Will you make it to the A team there? And what are the skill sets required to be a part of that A team? When you work there, do you, are you in a position to figure out, you know, how do you build viability around the work that you do? How do you reach out to your customers? Okay. Real customers in real market scenarios and securing funding for your startup while it is there for entrepreneurs out here. It is how do you build the value so that your organization finds it valuable to help you grow within the organization. So I, I strongly believe this entrepreneurial mindset, all right, is going to help you throughout the entire journey, you know, whether as an entrepreneur or in family businesses or as a corporate employee. Okay. So this is a very important slide that I'm showing you right now. This basically goes in and captures everything that you did on your, you know, on your, uh, uh, the Mentimeter activity that you did. All right, in terms of what are you looking for? Okay, so very quickly, ladies and gentlemen, can you go ahead and uh, put it up on the chat box that do you believe that your questions that you seek will get answered by looking at the sessions which are there on the screen right now? Right, yes or no? Very good. So I'm getting yeses. Okay. Fantastic. So while you're putting in not sure, Cyberver, very good. All right. And we can always figure out as to why, what is that thing which will, which, which will excite you, Sai. But uh, yeah, I, I appreciate your response and others who might have the same, similar kind of feeling. But what's important out here is that remember always, always, always. Entrepreneurial mindset is required everywhere. It is not just for your entrepreneurial startup, but also for your family businesses, for your corporate uh, jobs as well. Okay. So this is very important. Keep this in mind. Okay. This will always help you move forward. Thank you very much for your responses on your chat. Okay. And to do this, one thing which I must mention, to do this, we are going to take you through a very qu a quick thing on a startup journal. All right. As you do the journal, as you fill up the journal, it's very, very simple, okay? very, very simple. And it's there on the system. So we're going to take you through the system very quickly. We're going to look at the journal very quickly. As you do that, what it does is, like the game of snakes and ladders and like the game of, you know, uh, Monopoly, it will actually open up doors for you. And we're going to announce that in a, in a couple of, in a week or two, that it will open up doors for you. For example, if you do a certain number of exercises, all right, it will open up let's say invitation to fireside chats. If you do a couple of things, then it will open up your, uh, you know, your window to uh, um, uh, an elevated pitch session. If you do a couple of things, then it will open up the window for your idea pitch to get evaluated by someone and be given first level feedback. Yeah. If you do all of that, then it will open up another window for you wherein you will get, you know, one-on-one -on -one coaching on, on your pitch. And finally, if you are there, which I'm sure you will be, if you are there with your idea, then we will also, we might also enable an environment where you go ahead and pitch in front of real 
you know, uh, uh, external people. Some of them might be interested to look at what value proposition that you provide and whether is there a value proposition for them to invest in your organization, in, into your startup. So all of these will open up as you attend the sessions and you fill up those journals. Okay. So it's going to be an exciting journey that we're going to look at right now, ladies and gentlemen, you know, we will look at our promise to you. So by the end of the series, you will have at least the following output that you will walk out with. You will establish for yourself why entrepreneurship is important for your success, which I will cover amply giving my own examples. All right. And examples of other people discover your own entrepreneurial tendencies and watch what and chart out that, you know, what should be your own progress pathway. No one has said that you need to do it in this fashion itself. All right. For example, if you come to me, all right, the first thing that I do while I look at how to create a value proposition is to look at whether it's going to be financially viable or not, because I know I've got to bootstrap everything. So there are other ways of doing it. This process tells you, gives you a process which gives you the best chance of success. Okay. The third output that is going to work out for you is that you would have framed your own ideas. Keep your minds open. You may not start up right now. That's okay. But this exercise will help you frame your own ideas effectively such that it could be shared with others. We will also help build a single page elevator pitch. Now, all of you who do not want to become entrepreneurs in it, in its full glory, you may wonder why is an elevator pitch required? So let me tell you my first job. I got it because of an elevator pitch that I made to two gentlemen called Shashi and Ravi who were the, who were the front runners in the oil industry business in India at that point of time, along with the Ambani's. Guess who? Can you put it up on the chat box? The name were Shashi and Ravi. I'm not going to give you the last name. And I actually gave an elevator pitch to the, both of them. Of course, I knew that they were going to be there. And this elevator pitch was not in the elevator. It was from the parking to their office. Sai Baba, Baba is writing. Several people are typing. Ah, so I'm sure chat GPT slash Google has helped. And if not, then they would you would have known anyways. Wonderful. So Shashi and Ravi Ruya were the first, you know, and they told me, all right, you're so interested, gentlemen. And they were about to launch their SR oil uh, IPO. Okay. And they said, can you, can you work on that? I said, yeah, I will work on that. So I was selling, you know, uh, IPOs. That was the first thing that I picked up. And it was all because of a, I can't say elevator because it was not an elevator, but figure of speech, it was an elevator pitch. I made it while going from the parking in Asia village, Delhi, all right, to their guest house in Asia village. That is the only time that I had same about 20 seconds or 30 seconds, not more than that. So elevator pitch is required everywhere. So one of the outputs is elevator pitch, not just for your startup, but if you're going to get into a corporate, you better know, you know, how to go ahead and pitch yourself in 14 to 20 seconds, not more than that. All right. Decide whether you might want to start up and in what timeline, because we're going to give you enough of fodder. All right. Enough of opportunity for you to, you know, munch and munch and munch to figure out whether you really want to have a startup or not. And if so, then what is the timeline? For some people, it may be right now. For some people, it may be after a year later. Some people, it may be two years later, but it will happen. Okay. It comes in everyone's mind. You will see that. Okay. So these are the outputs that we are going to be working on. Very clearly. The why has to be important. Entrepreneurial tendencies to chart your own progress pathway, framing your ideas, framing the elevator pitch, a timeline. These are five things that you will walk out with apart from knowing, validating ideas, value proposition, business model canvas, a team, financial viability, so and so forth, so and so forth, so and so forth. Right? So this is our promise to you. All right. So keep that in mind. That's very important. So we are here today, which is the session one, which is exploring the exciting world of startups. 
all right and and this is how we will move and how we will move you know this is your you can take a picture in case you have i, I think you already got this in your in your uh, emails okay but otherwise just for a quick reference we have session 1 today session 2 tomorrow then we have session 3 uh, on uh, tuesday again wednesday so every tuesday wednesday you know for uh, this week next week is tuesday wednesday and weeks after that it is once a uh, week that we're going to have the session yeah so that's how we're going to do the entire thing but keep doing your filling up your startup journal because that will open up you know tiered premium you know avenues for you okay so that's a very important that's very important now we've talked about all of this that, that we're going to do very quickly you know I, I i i'm sure you would have gone ahead and done your search on Vadvani foundation all right the mission of Vadvani foundation is to accelerate economic development very important we focus on creating jobs changing lives, and scaling impact we've got variety of you know initiatives there is an initiative which is about vocational education creating job vocational education as such uh, but this 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 focus is completely on entrepreneurship and how do we build entrepreneurial ability and if you have the if you have that you know entrepreneurial ability and you be become an entrepreneur you are anyways going to go ahead and create jobs and how do you scale later on and so on so forth okay now within vadwani entrepreneur as we call it okay we have the thing startup which is this program which is a basic introduction to entrepreneurship then we have got something called the ignite program all right which is the why when how to do startups a little more detail all right and there's something called a lift off okay which is enabling startups to get seed capital remember i was talking about one of the premium services wherein you go ahead and you know you go ahead and uh, work on your uh, startups and one of the services which we get opened up for you is actually getting an opportunity to you know uh, get seed capital from various people who are in the business of providing seed capital okay so so th this is about vadwani a foundation and Vandwani entrepreneur you have enough and more you know stuff available on the net to go in and find out and we're going to focus on stuff that we go to you know we can add value directly let's make the most of the program i've kept on I've, I've talked about this you know a couple of times be curious okay which is look at the logical elements of you know have that question always in your mind empathize with others you know try to see things from others perspective that's very important all right attend the sessions it's just two hours just one and a half hours not even two hours all right uh, attend one and a half two hours attend participate put up your questions on the chat box ask questions okay complete your post session work you know to open up additional benefits and there is no harm in seeking help are we clear about that no harm in seeking help okay Many a times we just lose out because we didn't we didn't take that step to ask for help. Please ask for help. We may not have the answer for everything, but we will try to do as much as possible. Um, so we've looked at this. We've looked at startup ecosystem, you know, a little bit. We've looked at entrepreneurial mindset. Uh, why do startups succeed or fail? You know, we have we have, we look into that. You know, is there a secret sauce to succeed? We will look into that. But I'm going to combine all of these. And I'm going to, you know, show it by asking you some questions. Okay. So uh, the next picture, can you tell me who they are? Yeah. Sorry, Sudanshu, you're right. Turn on your right session two is on Thursday. Indra Satya Sundar. Okay. All right, Sundar Pichai, Indra Nui. We all know them, right? We all know them. Okay. All right. Um, and who are they? All right, go ahead, right. Yeah, Rite, Shraddha, yeah. Your story founder, that's Shraddha, that's right. Yeah, Oyo, absolutely, Ritesh. Guys, go ahead. Who is the other person? Yeah, your story, I know. 
So Nitesh and Shraddha, we all know, okay? What about the third person? Okay, let me tell you something, okay? Sir Hind, okay. So this person has tried to uh, you know, um, not really disrupt, okay, but has innovated in the health care space. <laughs> yeah, you got it, Tushar Vashish, okay. So this is uh, Oyo, Healthify, and uh, your story, okay. We know. So we know the first ones very well, okay, because, you know, they are always on some of the other cover okay we know them yeah not a lot of people responded but yeah people did respond but who are they who are they sagar is typing something good what about the others Okay, no idea. All right. <laughs> okay. Anyone else? Richard. Richard who? Jayant. Jayant Tech. All right. Okay. I give you uh, 500,000 points. Jonas Sock of Sock Vaccine. Okay. No. No, not Jonas Sock. I have idea through Google Lens. Ah, you're using Google Lens for this. Very good. Ah. Richard Montanez, Richard Montanex. Okay, so either you guys have just come to know or you're using Google Lens very effectively, but nonetheless. Okay, so for all those who don't know, do you know these? All right, Cheetos. Yeah, everyone knows this, right? Sony PlayStation. Half of us must have cried in front of our parents like nobody's business. All right, and posted. We've gone ahead and used them. Enough. Okay. Now let me tell you something. So, Richard Montanez, okay, is the VP of Cultural Sales for Frito Lay, which is the part of Pepsi. He was a janitor. He was a janitor. He used to clean the toilets in the offices of Frito Lay. And he went ahead and found out that, you know, hey, um, there are there is no, there is no um, flavor which can appeal to his brethren from, uh, from, from Mexico. You know, they were not hot enough. So their CEO once said that, you know, if you have an idea, just write to me. And he actually wrote to them. He actually wrote to the CEO saying that, you know, we could work on something which is, you know, very hot and spicy. Yeah. And today, in the American market, the Flaming Hot Crunchy Cheetos has 60%. It does 60% of the sales for the, you know, uh, Cheetos uh, brand. Okay. Ken Kutaragi. Ken Kutaragi, all right, who started with uh, the, who, who actually, uh, you know, gave birth to the PlayStation for Sony was actually moonlighting at one point of time as an engineer to help Nintendo, all right, move forward. But then Nintendo didn't want to, you know, once he did the work for Nintendo, Nintendo didn't go ahead and take up their, uh, take up his product, okay? So then Ken went ahead and suggested, you know, to Sony itself that why don't you do that? And Sony said, well, hello, we are not in the gaming business. And he pushed himself into it and he took the help of two CEOs, and that is the story. PlayStation happened, became the most successful product for Sony, accounting for more than 70% of Sony's sales at one point of time. Art Fry and Spencer Silver, all right, they were chemists. They were chemists. Spencer Silver was still a PhD. Art Fry actually joined 3M, all right, when he was not even a graduate. Okay? Of course, I think Art has already left for his heavenly abode. Spencer is still alive. All right. And they and he continues to work as a chemist. But they are the ones who gave birth to post it. Why I wanted to show this to you? Because all three of them and 
and millions of people like this have shown entrepreneurial mindset in their jobs. And it has given them the accolades. Who knows? One of you will be the Ken Kutaragi or the Richard Montanas or the Art and Spencer or the other hundreds and millions of people. I was giving an example to one of our colleagues today. You know, uh, very interestingly, the foreigners got toothpaste into India because India was a land of snake charmers and people used to use neem and charcoal to clean their tooth and all of that. So you may not be aware of brands like Four Hands and Binaka or Sibaka, but your parents and grandparents have grown with that. You are growing up with, you know, close up and stuff like that. All right. Um, the same guys, okay, there are two parts of the same story. Same guys are now coming into India and saying that charcoal is good and they've come out with, you know, close up black or close up with charcoal. But someone in that organization, now look at, don't forget, forget about the, you know, geopolitical issue around it. But someone in the or, in, in that organization, you know, has shown entrepreneurial mindset to introduce that product after probably 100 years of them having sold white colored toothpaste. Look at this, look at this other thing, you know, you, we all know about Mr. Dabur. Okay. Dabur medicals, Dabur medicines, Dabur food, Dabur this, Dabur that. All right. But someone in that organization showed entrepreneurial mindset to say, can we get all the jari booty or the herbs and spices into one toothpaste and you know call them Viko Vajradanti? Viko Vajradanti. All right. Now the thing is, it was a rave in the tier three, tier four markets. People preferred Viko Vajradanti. Okay. Even Baba Ramdev has come out with a with a with a uh, toothpaste. All right. Of course, he gets it made for somewhere else. That's a different issue. That's not the point. The point is, you know, someone came up with Diko Vajradant. That someone showed entrepreneurial mindset. Right? So, entrepreneurial mindset is required everywhere, ladies and gentlemen. You would have gotten tired by the, by the end of the session, by the number of times that I would have said, and emphasized upon the importance of entrepreneurial mindset for not just entrepreneurs, but also for job seekers. Okay? So now tell me, with having seen all of these people, all right, I'm going to give you a Mentimeter code. What are the common traits or strengths do they all share? Go ahead, scan the Mentimeter, you know, uh, QR code, give a response. What do you think is the common trait or strength that all of these people have shared because of which they are all entrepreneurial in their approach whether they're their own startups or whether they're working for a corporate what is that common trait or what is that strength so vinayak uh, can you put up the um the mentimeter screen because i'm sure responses will start coming up absolutely absolutely ladies and gentlemen absolutely. what is the common trait or strength do that, that these you know entrepreneurs have do they share you know? so you'll have to unshare your screen for that yeah, yeah sorry, and sorry. Uh, also a time check it's 8 12 yeah i am sharing my screen just one second all right is it visible not as yet yeah it's come up very good courage yeah Okay, very good. Very quickly, let's. So I'm very quickly doing a stack ranking to see, you know, where do these fit in? Okay. All right. So, uh, 
Cup. A uh, minute and a half is almost up, so I'll be closing this. Okay, let's just complete till 20. Okay. So, so ladies and gentlemen, it's very important that you all, you know, use your fingers, use your thumbs to respond because it gives me confidence that you are here. Okay. All right. Let's just, let's just stop there. You know, let's just close this uh, Mentimeter right now, uh, Vinayak. All right. So the voting is closed. Eight. All right, good. Okay, now if you look at it, what is coming up is that, okay, courage, innovation, confidence, innovative ideas, execution, friendship. Okay, very good, teamwork. All right, okay. Okay, recognizing the problem, seen worse, be worse before best, yeah. So keep these in mind because these are important, you know, these are important. Now I'm going to share. Uh, can you unshare your screen, uh, Vinayak? Uh, absolutely. Okay, so this is what we were seeing. What do you see on the screen, Vinayak? Uh, I see the what is common traits or strengths to this yeah, year. So one single screen, right? Yeah. Yes. So basically, ladies and gentlemen, what is happening is that, you know, these people, what you've gone in and identified are correct. Okay. But if you try to put all of them together, okay, they're basically what they're trying to do is they're trying to make the word in their own way, in their own manner, in their own fashion, they're trying to make the world a better place. That's a common trait. If you look at all your answers, okay, all of them lead to making the world a better place. All right. Now, uh, what does making the world a better place mean? Okay, the making the world a better place essentially means that these are people who are problem solvers, innovators, and they are enterprising. You know, here the word entrepreneurs means they're enterprising. They are all entrepreneurs. All of them are entrepreneurs. They have looked at things where people have not looked at. A chemist in a 3M shop, all right, by virtue of fun, creates something and that becomes their highest selling product. Yeah? Or companies whose entire fortune has changed. Why? Because someone has made that effort. Okay? So problem solvers, innovators, and entrepreneurs. And these are the people with the entrepreneurial mindset. And while entrepreneurs have been there for, you know, as, as long as humanity has been there, but this today is an exciting time to be a startup founder. There are so many things which are working in our favor. All right. Regulatory, um, uh, market-wise customer awareness wise, technology wise, all right? Will it continue to improve? Yes. But today, if you look at today from the perspective of hindsight, you will find that this is an extremely exciting time to, you know, uh, get started. Okay. So one second. Okay. This is an extremely exciting time to get started. But I must also tell you, and I must warn you that if 100 startups start, then 90 of them fail. Okay. And it's important to know why they are, why, why do they fail? So what I want you to do is I want you to, you know, tell me why do, you know, uh, entrepreneurs fail. So again, go and uh, click on the uh, Mentimeter, you know, uh, QR code. And tell me why do they fail? We'll do it very quickly. All right. And I've identified certain reasons. You will find that the reasons that you identify as reason for failure is not too different from, you know, uh, 
the way that we are looking at. Okay. So, uh, Virag, if you could kindly share your uh, Mentimeter screen and let's look at what are the sure, results which are coming from people. <laughs> I am doing that right now. I guess the screen will be visible just now. OK. Yeah. All right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Hey guys, there are 69 participants. How come we only have 16, 18 people responding? Quick, quick, quick. All right, 69 participants. I'm going to catch all of each one of you in, in case you don't respond. All right, good, good, good. Move it, move it. You just have to poll. Okay. Statistically speaking, we need to have at least about, you know, 30 responses before we can bank upon the percentages. It actually, you know, while you guys are doing this, this is actually giving me an insight, all right, into my journey as an entrepreneur. And all the other people that I have, you know, coached and mentored and taught uh, across the globe. Okay, all right. Do we have some more coming in? Okay, we can put a pause out here, uh, Vinayak, and we can move all forward. Right. All right. All right. So I'll stop sharing. No, no, don't, don't, don't stop. I'm sharing the screen right now. Okay. Okay. This is very, very important. Okay. Why it's important, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, so look at it this way. You know, very quickly, I'm going to tell you. I see an opportunity or I see a problem that needs addressing. I know who this opportunity is for or the problem is affecting whom. That means the consumer. That means that I have that empathy and I have that curiosity. Right. Then I see whether I have the skills to handle, you know, to solve this problem or not. Right. There could be a lot of problems in this world. Not every problem is, you know, worth the effort or worth solving. And even if they're worth solving, I may not have the wherewithal. And what kind of wherewithal? I may not have the money or the funds, or I might not have the skill set. Or I may not have the team, you know, who has the combined skill set to be able to handle that. Like, for example, I know that there is a requirement for EV, uh, uh, EVs, okay, electric vehicles. I know who requires them. But um, I don't have the money and I don't have the inclination, all right, or I don't have the skill set to go ahead and build an EV. So it may be a problem worth solving fossil fuel and all of that, but it may not be best for me. And that is exactly, in fact, what, what a lot of these EV guys were banking upon, right? Tesla and everyone, I mean, it took so much time for so many, for so many companies, all right, to actually come out with EV products. Not that they did not have the money, but they didn't have the inkling maybe. Maybe there was someone who was not entrepreneurial enough, but a very interesting thing is happening in the, in, in, in the Indian market today. You suddenly have some 25, 30 different brands of EV scooters. Okay. So Ather had been working on this for a long time. Ola went ahead and created some you know, capacity for over, about a million scooters and all of that. But the biggest innovation has been that people are going ahead and importing stuff from China and assembling it out here and selling it. A lot of EV scooters, they look alike because in all likelihood it comes from the same you know, forge. And I know of one or two of these guys who are not even engineers, you know, like automobile engineers or electrical engineers or mechanical engineers. All right. I know a guy who's a leather engineer. 
who actually opened up an EV company. All right. So the so so the timing is also very important. At the same time, you know, things mature and evolve. An entrepreneur that is the fun part of being an entrepreneur. Who stops you from looking at some stuff like this? You remember that picture with the girl? Initially, we were all responding in terms of inventory management. All right, but there could be other variety of things. And you're the same set of people who looked at the cow and looked at variety of opportunities. So, so what is the number one reason for startup failure? Now I can't do that. It is, it is, you know, the idea is not very innovative. Then why did you get into it? The lack of funds may be there because I did not manage the funds, you know, properly. Uh, the funding did not did not come. The runway, you know, it, it ended abruptly. Conflict between co-founders, extremely big thing. We're going to cover that in the session on A team, right? Uh, uh, little market need. That means the idea was not validated enough. Or while it was being validated, you know, people went ahead and did not look at the realities. You know, my mother makes amazing chow mein. All right. So I will go ahead and, or my mother makes amazing pizzas. So I will go ahead and become Domino's pizzas tomorrow. People get these kind of ideas. Nothing wrong with it, but was it validated? Was it a level playing field with it, with Domino's pizza and your mom's pizza or my mom's pizza? Okay, the timing may not be right. You know, like, like you know, like our colleague Sunita has mentioned it. You know, the timing may not be right. Some sometimes the timing is not right, and people come up with something, and you know, it doesn't work. We have enough of examples from Google and from other organizations which you know launched stuff which didn't work because it was ahead of their time. All right. Uh, poor revenue potential. You know, sometimes we become very, very emotional about it. We fall in love with the solution. We keep on telling people that we should love, we should fall in love with the problem than the solution. But sometimes you fall in love with the solution because we work too hard. We work very hard again for it. All right. So, so there are multiple reasons for startup failure. A majority of them lie within us. And I can tell you that with confidence, having failed not once, but a couple of times. And where all I've been successful, I've been able to get past these. So very quickly, you know, just unsure when I let me let me take people to my uh, slide there to show what are what are some of the things that I have identified, you know, as something that goes ahead and, you know, uh, uh, does this. So, yeah, uh, when I just to confirm, you see my full screen. Yes, sir. I see the full screen. All right. So, top reasons, you know, no market need. You know, I became emotional about the solution. My mother's pizza. I went ahead and launched it. Product first approach. Okay. Again, I'll build the product first and then I'll think whether it is required or not. Why product first? Because someone else is doing it. All right. Incompatible team. I have gone through that. I have gone through a venture, one of my ventures. All right, which actually went ahead and you know had a tremendous potential, but I lost out on it because I was trying to be a different manager. Okay, and that's for a separate discussion sometime. Stiff competition, yes, and you know you have obviously heard about red ocean and blue ocean strategy. Should go ahead and read it because you know stiff competition. There are there are environments where even stiff competition gives you a very big upside. You know, I am working. I am working on a uh, uh, working on an agri startup idea. All right, there is stiff competition. The margins are very very low. But I know that there is a possibility, and I will I will you know. But I've not fallen in love with the solution. I am falling in love with the problem, and I'm I've already started innovating even before I have launched the product. Product. Okay. Weak unit economics. When the margins are very low. When the cost is very low, when the margins are very low, when it's a high volume game, you know, inadvertently, even a even a 50 pesa here and there, and the kind of you know agri business that I'm agri startup that I'm building, it is actually like that. And in fact, one of the guys that I've been speaking to, they said that even a 20p difference in the kind of money which is being spent towards you know engaging manpower can go ahead and change the dynamics of you know uh, everything. So yeah, so you've got weak unit, unit economics, all right. And this whole thing about you know that product first approach being repeated in terms of a mindset that built it and they will come. You know, I uh, it is required. You know, people will come. People don't come. 
you have to go out then chasing investors not customer that is one big thing which goes wrong with a lot of people you know i uh, in you know i i, I used to run a net tech venture okay and um, i actually went ahead and made my pitch to a whole lot of people i used to be in bombay those days okay now i'm in bangalore but those those days i used to be in bombay i made a pitch to god knows who all people all right people wanting to take advantage of the product this that everything okay but fortunately i had an equally important equally engaging focus towards customers and that is why my edtech venture while i was still bootstrapping and i was actually running around you know trying to see if i can get uh, more uh, funding okay actually got bought over because the people who bought over saw that the core of my product philosophy my customer philosophy my my uh, servicing philosophy was extremely strong all right so it's very important chasing investors and not customers is one of the reasons why you know people fail and two more things not letting go sometimes you know like i was saying falling in love with the solution not the problem so sometimes you don't let go you know you don't let go you 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 remain stuck to the solution whereas you should have gone ahead and pivoted and pivoting is also something that we will cover in one of the session okay we'll touch upon it we'll we'll brush past it and that perfectionist id attitude you know a lot of my engineering friends have that you know that the product has to be nah. people don't want to love with it boss people will never fall in everyone will not fall in love with your product give them something that they can start with keep improving upon it what did whatsapp do did whatsapp did whatsapp at that point of time when they started did they have all the features as they have today no so did they keep on waiting till such time they had this kind of product version no they went ahead and launched something which people started using which went ahead and addressed that need that people had which smss were not being able to fulfill which icq was not being able to fulfill which regular messengers were not being able to fulfill they went into that area niche and once adoption started they went ahead and added more and more and more and more features do you know at one point of time they wanted to charge 1 dollar per year for using whatsapp and they in fact went ahead and announced it also a lot of good people like me went ahead and said we pay for it also or right. they said that okay if they have got let's say a billion users then billion users giving 1 rupee uh, oh, sorry 1 dollar all right would make essentially a billion dollars great idea but they did not go with that perfectionist attitude they they introduced stuff over a period of time sometimes products don't even see the light of the day because of the perfectionist perfectionist attitude and that is that because one of the reasons for for failure and i've seen it enough and more okay you would you would have also seen it. don't fall in love with the solution fall in love with the problem what is the problem that you are wanting to solve is it solvable is it worth solving can you solve it will it be will it be financially feasible viable to solve that problem all right so it's very very important that curiosity and that empathy is very important because see all of us will have dreams all right and everyone thinks every entrepreneur i also thought like this you know i will get on the cycle and there's a rocket and i get on the rocket and boost off but the reality of life is that it is not like that you have enough and more things you know which which goes ahead and forms a blockade but during these times when you have questions like where do i start what do i do how do i stay on track do you notice that there is a ladder or a ship or a you know climbing ladder available and that is what these kind of program the one which you are attending from badwani bombay will provide no one is saying that you will have a smooth ride okay it is not going to be possible but if you if you are willing if you are ready to explore your empathy and curiosity don't worry entrepreneurship 
entrepreneurial mindset will happen. It's a discipline that can be learned. There are tools available. There are roadmaps available. And we will help you launch and scale. Okay? The ecosystem support is there to help you. And it is irrespective of whether you will become an entrepreneur with your startup, whether you become, whether you demonstrate your entrepreneurial mindset in your family-owned business, or whether you show your mindset when you get a job. Okay? So I'm going to, I'm going to sort of keep you not uh, engage any further on this. We've got a couple of things that we're going to see. All right, very quickly. All right, can you go ahead and uh, let me know in case you have any questions. Can you put it up on the uh, chat box? Things that you believe you want to know and I have not covered or you think by looking at the overall structure has not got covered. All right, if some one of you, one of you has gone ahead and said that, okay, maybe, you know, uh, this is not right for me. Is there something like that which is there? So go ahead and you know mention that. We're going to take about five ten minutes more, but uh, I hope you found this uh, you know interesting and engaging. And so this is the only session where we are going to focus on the core, you know, the energy. Next time onwards, we are going to focus on what are you going to face, how is it to be handled. And what are the tools available? Okay. So what we will do now is we will go ahead and a couple of things that I wanted to tell you. All right. We will be showing you, we will be giving you case studies and videos and stuff like that. All right. Please go, go through them. Please watch the videos, go through the case studies, engage with, you know, your community. You need to get your GET done, which is the entrepreneurship test. You know why? Because that will tell you that, you know, what is the entrepreneurial ability that you have? What are the skill sets that you have? And therefore, what are the other things that you need in your in your venture or in your team when you work in a corporate environment? Okay. And don't forget your startup journal. We're going to show you your startup journal very quickly. But before that, one very last thing which I want you to do is I want you to tell me right now, okay, and while this is a this is a mentimeter activity. Uh, uh, you know, we can we can go ahead and do it very quickly on the chat. Okay, uh, let's do it on the chat itself. Why is entrepreneurship important to you? One word, at the most. Why is entrepreneurship important to you? Very quickly. I want all of you to go ahead and write. Why is entrepreneurship important to you? Remember, you need to have an entrepreneur mindset to have your own startup, or to do your family-owned business or to, to get that great job. Sagar, you want to hear about Mero incompatible team? We will discuss it one day. Surely, we will have these ask me anything, you know, uh, sessions. You positively ask me that time, Sagar, I will let you know. Very interesting, you know. A, from an outside, it looked as the crack team, the A team. But how cracks came up? Yeah, all right. Why is entrepreneurship important to me? Economic development, innovate, solving a problem. You, 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 you. Why is it important to you? For me, entrepreneurship at the age of 15 was about being a rebel. Okay. In capitalism, it is the only way for me to become free. Oh my God, that was heavy. And that was not a word, by the way, Vinayak Joshi. That was a complete Ramayan. I want one word. Sri Harsha is saying, want to be self-made. Yeah, absolutely. You know, while you guys are writing it, I remember I was once starting with a social venture. So one of my advisors, okay, very senior gentleman, okay, very well known in the uh, capital markets domain, Okay, said, Paco, is this a venture which is going to get you your seven series? I know, I, I'm sure you know what, what he meant, you know. I used to have a Ford Endeavor those days. So I said, no, sir. So he said, okay, leave your big car with me. I actually had to leave my car. And and I, the only other car that I used to have that time was a uh, uh, Nano, all right, which I don't know why I had bought it. But anyways, 
so actually uh, he kept the car for a couple of days and when i and when i didn't ask him he told me that you know i want to actually see whether you really really wanting to go in for a social venture uh, all right or this is just a fancy way of making money there's nothing wrong with it profit making is not, there's nothing wrong with profit making there is nothing wrong with profiteering all right he was he was an economist so he could talk like talk that language but good thanks a lot for all the all your responses all right why i asked you this question is because the first question that you will respond on your startup journal today itself will be the answer to this question why is entrepreneurship important to me so what i'm going to do now is i'm going to hand it over to uh, you know my colleague all right before that there will be a small poll which will be on the you know whether you are satisfied with the session not satisfied with the session do that all right and next time we are going to talk in terms of idea and opportunity validation and ta da that's what we're going to do okay uh, that's on the 23rd uh, of uh, march and i'm going to hand it over to my colleague sudanshu out here who's going to take you through the platform very quickly you guys don't need uh, a too much of hand holding there because you you know you will be able to do it but what is important is that he will show you the startup journal and that journal is very important because that journal is the only way in which by which you know advanced premium services will open up for you they are not too big they are not too heavy but you need to do that so let's do it in that sequence vinayak could you do the poll first and then uh, uh, we'll take it to sudanshu all right and we'll close it there will that be okay um all right maybe let's just uh, take it to sudanshu first and then he'll also explain the all right, okay, all right. Good, all right. Good, good. to sudanshu good hi everyone thank you parko it was very insightful session let me present my uh, share my screen mm. till the time stanchu is sharing his screen let me tell you the next session is really going to be the first session of this thing right this was not the pilot episode this was the uh, precursor yes, to screen the major launch and uh, yes stanchu you can take over your screen yes, is stanchu can yes so i would request each and every uh, one of you to open a separate uh, tab in your window and open the platform there you can open the platform by click uh, typing the com uh, www.community.wfglobal.org and uh, you'll see a similar page like this so all of you must have joined uh, your cohort by uh, clicking on this section so first you have to go to the community section you'll see these two uh, a question posted by us so the first uh, question is entrepreneurship is important to me because we have we have already done this activity on, on mentimeter so you simply have to uh, uh, type your answer here so this is the box and simply you have to click uh, 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 post it here so we have 10 seconds to do this activity immediately i would request each and every individual to post your answer here Guys, we are running behind the time. We request each and every individual to post your answers here. Then we have another question here. So this is the feedback basically. So you have to simply uh, select any of the op option which you think is closest to you. because this will help us in serving you in a better way so guys uh, please hurry up post your uh, 
answers and uh, then give us a fee give the feedback as well it will hardly take 10 seconds not more than that you simply have to collect uh, uh, select an option and you have to type a one or two word answer guys go ahead and put in your responses it's very important just you've just written a, a lot of you have just given your responses so you don't have to really think you just need to go ahead and you know put it up there one word two word whichever works for you quickly post it here. So, okay, guys, moving to the next part. I hope you have uh, un uh, answered uh, these questions and given the feedback. If not, please do it after the, uh, immediately after this. So this is how your uh, this entire uh, cohort looks like. We have this uh, start here, se here section. You will see it on your, the left side of your the window. So here you will see all these updates. We keep on posting about the upcoming events of our mentors, advisor, facilitators. They keep on posting the new updates. Similarly, you can share your thoughts. You can comment on it. So you can scroll it after this session to so check, check this out. I'm taking you to the uh, next part. So here is this uh, seminar session window. So here you can see uh, all the details of the upcoming events. So next session we have on Thursday. So you can see the session two ideas and opportunity validation is on Thursday. You simply have to click on this event. You have to RSVP, click on the RSVP button. And then you can add it to your calendar as well. So you, whichever calendar you use, like Google, Apple, Outlook, whichever calendar you use, you simply can click. You have to click on it, and you can add this on your calendar so that so that you get all the notification on time. So then this there this uh, my my general section the one uh, I mean the question which I asked you to fill. So you have to if you have missed uh, checking it out on the community feed, you can. Uh, access it by clicking on these link as well so here uh, this is the link to for the session one general question the other one is for the feedback poll moving to the next part you see this my resources section so you will see all these session materials and take action and other stuff so you have to click on the session material you'll see the entire agenda related to this session here we are going to upload the session recording. Some of you might have uh, joined this session a bit late. So recording will be uploaded here within 24 hours. You can check out uh, the entire recording there. And remember that in order to uh, get your uh, certificate and participation done, you have to complete the session by 80% or more of the online live session class. Here is the quick recap session. A brief about the upcoming session. And then there are some additional references. These are short videos, two, three minute videos related to entrepreneurship, related to this uh, particular session uh, topic, which we covered. So you can watch this video after this session. So here is so the take reiterate, action. You have so to, uh, to reiterate, Sudhanshu. As sorry. You, no, just to reiterate what you said, Sudhanshu. Mm -hmm. uh, ladies and gentlemen, it is extremely, extremely important that you complete your journal. The journals are very, very simple. All right. They, and you should do it, you know, like we used to do it in school, you know, do the homework in class kind of thing. You know, that means if not during the session, but the moment you get through, spend about five, 10 minutes, 15 minutes and get it done. All right. Because that's the only way in which you're going to move forward. And insofar as, the, insofar as our interaction is concerned and specifically taking it from what Sagar was saying, you will get those, you know, ask me any time, ask me any question kind of sessions. You know, I'll also invite you for three minute pictures and stuff like that. You know, we will do all of those activities. A lot of those things we've been doing, a lot of those, those learnings are from, you know, what, how the best of the institutes, whether MIT or Stanford or Babson do it, you know, and we've learned it from there. And, you know, these three minute pictures and all that, we will go ahead and do that. But, but what you get out of here, is a reflection of what you do. Yeah. So just just highlighting and reinforcing, you know, what Sudanshu has just been talking about. It's extremely important that you go ahead and do those activities. Yeah. Always. Thanks, Marco. 
So here's the, your take action section. Here is a small activity which you have to do. This is your uh, general enterprise tendency test. You have to click on this link. It will direct you to another window. So these are some of the questions which have uh, all these uh, multiple op options. Tend to agree, tend to dis disagree. These are around uh, a total of uh, uh, more around 50, uh, more than 15, 5, 54 questions. So this will roughly take uh, five minutes of yours. You simply have to select an option and then you have to uh, click on at the bottom of it. So you can expand the, these windows as well. So you simply have to click on uh, this double arrow and uh, this will expand into the full screen. Then you can click again to collapse it. Then uh, you can, uh, uh, there's a chat window as well. Then you can go to the uh, member section as well. For example, if you want to uh, chat with or uh, reach out to any of the guide or mentor or any of your the participant, you'll see all these profiles here. You simply have to click on these three do dots and you have to click on the chat icon and it will, uh, chat window will open. You can directly reach out to the other participants as well. Thank you very much. First of all, I need to reiterate this and I'll say this again. It's very important for you to fill the forms which we told you about. One was the feedback and the other was your journal. And uh, secondly, thank you very much, Paco. Thank you, sir, for the amazing session we just had. And uh, I'm sure there were a lot of questions which people had to ask. And if we're already a lot over time this time. So, sir, if it's okay with you, maybe next time, before we start the session, we could do a small rapid fire. Yeah. All right. So next time before we start the next session, we're going to have a small rapid fire. And for the students who have filled the poll, they can give me the questions for the rapid fire. All right. Use. Who are you going to fire rapidly? <laughs> <laughs> Nobody, sir. I, I... Okay. That it's okay. This is that it's not me. It's okay. Yeah, yeah, rapid fire uh, only happens in large corporations like Twitter, not in. <laughs> uh, but uh, coming back to the main point, uh, thank you very much, everyone, for being here. Thank you, Sudhanshu. Thank you, sir. Thank you, everyone from the Vadvani Foundation. Thank you, students.